Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Last week, we talked about the web of Hashimoto's thyroiditis and how different physiological functions can pull on this web. Today, we're gonna to go into more specifics. We're gonna talk about Hashimoto's thyroiditis and neurological conditions, right? So how can Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is a autoimmune condition that impacts the thyroid, affect the brain? If we look at this diagram behind me, Hashimoto's thyroiditis will impact the neurological web by one, affecting neural inflammation. It can create inflammation that can be systemic and eventually lead to brain inflammation. There is a condition called Hashimoto's encephalopathy where the brain can actually get inflammation and create havoc. So inflammation is a big problem in autoimmune disease, but in the case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it can directly impact the brain through to the inflammatory process. Then, if you have neuroinflammation, you can have impaired learning or decreased plasticity, the ability to learn and connect, right? So the brain needs to connect and fire and speak to each other in order to uh, learn properly. So the plasticity of the brain will start to go down and the learning ability will start to be impaired. Another one is it actually affects peripheral nerves also due to swelling, entrapment, or the fact that these immune complexes can create problems with small fibers, okay? Another one is the effect of neurotransmitters. So dopamine, serotonin, GABA, all these neurotransmitters can be impaired, one, through inflammatory processes, or two, due to cross-reaction to certain foods that impact the brain. So neurotransmitter production, transmission, reception can all be impacted due to Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And that in turn will pull on the web and affect other parts of the brain. TPO cross-reaction or cross-reactivity. TPO is the autoimmune marker for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. When you have TPO um, elevation, sometimes that TPO elevation will pull on this web and affect the cerebellum, creating uh, issues with balance and so forth, okay? Over here, we have something called um, primed microglia. Prime microglia is basically the immune cells of the brain have become prime and active, and it's hard to turn down. And it creates uh, inflammatory cascades that can impact the entire brain and the function of neurotransmitters and so forth. I just skipped this one. This is impaired thyroid hormone production. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that thyroid hormone production starts in the brain. The hypothalamus releases thyroid releasing hormone, which is in the brain, to the pituitary gland, which is in the brain. And the pituitary gland is what releases thyroid stimulating hormone. Therefore, neuroinflammation caused by global inflammation, let's say from Hashimoto's thyroiditis, will have a negative feedback and an impact how thyroid hormone is produced. Over here, we have neurodegeneration. Obviously, when you have damage due to either um, elevation of TPO antibodies affecting the cerebellum, or you have neuroinflammation impacting neuron transmission and damaging neurons, you can get neurodegenerative changes. Another one is blood-brain barrier permeability. There is a, a barrier between the rest of the body and the brain. And the reason that barrier is there is to protect the brain from toxins and microbes and other pathogens, right? However, this blood-brain barrier can be breached as a result of one, neuroinflammation. Two, it could be due to uh, foods and per, uh, pesticides and herb, um, uh, herbicides and so forth, or even plastics like BPA, right? It can damage the blood-brain barrier. Another thing that can damage the blood-brain barrier is a concussion, head trauma, right? So if you have impact to the brain, it can affect the blood-brain barrier. Lastly, over here, we have cerebellum. Hashimoto's thyroiditis um, 
One of the first areas that I see deficiencies after you get diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis is that you have cerebellar findings. Cerebellum is just right at the base of the skull here, and it's responsible for uh, eye movements, cognition, um, balance, and so forth, right? And one of the big culprits of that is gluten. How Hashimoto's, gluten, and cerebellum are all interrelated uh, in terms of how it functions. So when we have a patient who comes with thyroid issues, we actually do an exam on the cerebellum. Can they stand straight, right? Can they do what we call the Romberg test with the feet uh, together? Can they do that test with the eyes closed? Can they reach for something without having a tremor in their hand or a shake? We call it intentional tremors, right? Or do they have proper movements of their hand or dysdiatal kinesia, right? These are all things that you can find with cerebellar deficiencies. The interesting part of this web is that when you pull on this aspect, neuroinflammation, it inf impacts everything on this web. If you pull on this web, everything over here will be impacted. If you have thyroid hormone production issues and you pull here, eventually it's going to create these problems. So when we say we use a, a complex model, a web model for helping patients with hypothyroid or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, we're talking about how you can't treat things in a very linear manner. You can't say, oh, we have neuropathy, here's a supplement for that. Oh, you have deficiency in neurotransmitter, here's more neurotransmitters. You have TPO, let's give you something for that. Um, you have thyroid hormone issues, let's give you thyroid hormones. Uh, we have neuroinflammation, so we'll give you an anti-inflammatory supplement. You can't keep just giving things um, to a patient to address every single symptom. What you need to do is start pulling on this web and affecting other parts of it. And that's where a good clinician comes in. You need to know where to pull on the web in order to make the most impact while doing the minimal amount of nutritional support. It really starts with foundational pieces, dietary things, stress reduction, sleep habits, right? Good relationships. Uh, you have to unload all that. And then we'll see what's left and we start pulling on this web and impact the neurological function, right? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.